Hi guys, today we're building a recursion app. We're going to use recursion to do stuff. I've created a package and I've added a recursion app um, file in there. So that's what we have at the moment. The title, by the way, of the video is supposed to be a pun. Um, we're going to use, well, learn the art of recursion. And at the same time, we're going to use recursion to produce some art. Well, subjectively. Um, so what do we want? We want a bigger window for this one because we might do some animations which might overflow. Um, so yeah, recursion. It's essentially a function that you can call within itself. Add text, for example. And if you do something like this, so you call the function uh, within itself, then you end up with a, a recursive call, and the ID will actually tell you about that. It shows this little symbol. I'm going to create a string. We're going to take some parameters, like where we're going to draw that text, double X, double Y. Um, we're going to then rotate the text angle and then we're going to <coughs> have different font sizes. So let's not do that first. Created the root, add text. Probably want to move the root outside. Add text. Let's do a simple one so that I could explain what this will do. Uh, and then we'll add some fancy stuff later. Uh, zero degrees, font size 100. And then just create your usual text object from JavaFX. Text set translate um, X. So rotate angle and font size, set font. Root get children and add it to the scene graph. Right, so sh now we should uh, see the letter A, which is what we have. So this is your typical method call, right? Nothing new here. Now, if you were to call this in here somewhere within the function itself, within the method itself, what you're doing is recursively calling your function. And typically you have the starting point or the base case, the initial call and the terminating condition. If you don't have the initial call, such as this one, which is not inside the function, then obviously the function gets never gets called, so the recursion never starts. If you don't have a terminating condition, then the recursion never stops because it just keeps calling itself. And chances are you'll end up with a stack overflow exception or something similar. And so here's our base case, as it were. This is where we start calling the function, which means we are lacking terminating condition. I'm going to be changing font sizes and I'm going to reduce them. So if we say something like if font size is less than five, then skip, don't do anything. In which case this becomes our terminating condition. This is a condition that needs to be satisfied in order for this function to stop calling itself. And then I can safely call now let's do all this and then I'll just reduce one side by one. Um, yeah, that'll do. Let's see this in action. That's basically letter A being printed however many times on top of itself, which gave us almost like triangular looking thing. I guess this is something that you could expect from the letter A. 
Right, so there are a few things we want to do. First of all, we want to move X and Y around so that the next call is not exactly the same, so that we can see more letters, or we'll see the same letter but in different places. For that, we can use the angle and do something with it. Given an angle, uh, you can obtain a vector from that angle into the space using um, cosine of the angle as the x component and the sine of the angle for the y component. You can then scale the vector by multiplying by some arbitrary number. This gives you the length of the vector or increases the length of the vector. Uh, let's go with font size because I don't think these are going to do anything. So fonts, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it like this. And then for the next text, we're not going to add it at X and Y, we're going to offset it by our vector. I'll keep the angle the same for now so you can see the changes. And then we're going to do something with the angle. So you can see that they're all offset and the font size goes down, I guess. Minus one doesn't make that much of a difference. But the angle is always the same because it's zero degrees initially and never changes throughout the recursion. How about for the next call, we're going to change the angle by say 90 degrees. This ought to make things interesting. Okay, so we're getting something. We are, um, well, we're printing the letter, then rotating it by 90 degrees. Uh, printing or drawing another letter with font size minus one over here, and then just keep doing that using recursion. Now let's make this a bit bigger. So this will increase the vector's length. So they're further apart. That's not too bad, actually. This is getting somewhere. So we're producing <laughs> some art, I guess. And if we increase this even further, then that should give us something that we can actually see. Yeah, so it's like the spiraling motion, I guess. Um, and then you can sort of start playing around with these, because this just kind of carries the message. We're not changing it. We could. We could take the first character. Um, well, there's only one character. And then, you know, just uh, move to the next character and then use that as string value of C. And that will give you some of the alphabet, well, all of the alphabet, and then some characters that you can't see. What else can we do? Well, we don't do this. We use something like star, so it's more aesthetically pleasing, I guess, if you kind of do this sort of thing. So you've got this portal type thing um, printed to the, drawn to the screen. And these are the rotations, which is why it looks a bit odd. If you don't do rotations, this might actually be nicer. Yeah, that looks much nicer, I think. And as a final thing, how about we animate the thing? So set translate X and Y, we're setting it directly. If we don't do that, and Instead, we play translate transition. Duration of, I don't know. Let's start with 0 0.4 seconds and then we'll tweak as needed from X. Let's use the middle of the screen as the starting point and then it's going to animate to X and Y. You 
probably want to add a delay because, well, let's first see without the delay. Because I'll do it in one go, which is not something what we want. In fact, it's not even doing anything. Where did my text go? Oh, I didn't play the animation. So the animation is pretty much done synchronously in terms of um, because they have exactly the same delay. They start at the same time, they finish at the same time. We don't want that. We want to create an actual animation that runs over some frames. Set delay in which case um, duration seconds. This needs to be different for each text that we're adding. And the only thing that I can think of that we're changing sort of gradually is font size because we're reducing it by one. So I'm going to use that um, delay. I'm going to use that and then it starts at 100. Let's increase this to 150. So this will be 150, 149, 148 and so on. But I want the opposite of that because I want the initial, the first ones to do a longer animation than the last ones. Because otherwise the animation would stop before the last ones were added. So how about we divide this by 150? This gives us a ratio between zero and, well, I suppose between five over 150 and 150 over 150, which is one. So if I do the reverse of that, one minus that. Yeah, let's do, let's do this. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Um, how about we start here somewhere? Because seems to kind of lean toward the right hand side. It's pretty good. Um, maybe shift a little and then to the top. Three hundred. Yeah, that looks that looks better. And what if we increase the delay by I don't know two point five? I want to I want the animation to take longer. Yeah, I mean you can adjust the position of the animation perfectly, but this looks okay. And then. Obviously, you can add interpolators and stuff like that. So there are a few things you can change within the animation itself. And as a last thing, let's add scale animation. Why not? Um, scale transition. ST. I guess the same amount of time. Uh, from X, from zero to one and then just play. Oh, we need a delay, yeah. Need. I'll use the same delay because then they all finish at the same time. Or I'll increase that even further because I, I didn't really see the scaling. There we go. That's pretty good. I wonder if we can just not do the translation and then just keep the scaling. Um, I quite like the yeah, quite like this. 
reminds me of some sort of really um, old games where we didn't have fancy graphics. We had to kind of work with what we got at the time. Okay, so in this video we talked about recursion. A recursion is, well, a recursive function is a function that calls itself within its own body. You have the base case or the starting point where you need to initiate the uh, function call, invoke the very first function call, and then because the function calls itself, it will just go on until the terminating condition. On that note, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.